Okay, here's some uh, examples based on the junior cert video for the rules of powers. Um, so I'm going to try to do some of these and they start off uh, easy and they start to get a little bit more hard. Let's look at the first one. Simplify this. So we can see that 2 multiplied by root 2. Well, the first thing you should have noticed from the last video is that we can change that root 2 to this. So we can say that's the same as 2 multiplied by 2 to the power of a half. And now it's just a multiplication problem. 2 on its own is effectively 2 to the power of 1 and 2 to the power of a half. We add the 1 here and the half. So remember, a number on its own to the power of 1, we can say 1 and a half. That is 1 and a half. We can write that as 3 over 2. So if you do 1 plus a half in your calculator, it will give you 3 over 2. And that's the first one done. The next one. Solve this for x. 2 to the power of x is equal to 8. So what we're kind of looking for here always is this uh, common base, you could say, right, on both sides. How can we find a common base? Well, 2 is a pretty low base number. Can we get 8 down as 2 to the power of something? Yes, we can say 2 to the power of x is equal to, and we can change 8 to 2 to the power of 3. Now, if 2 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 3, and both bases are the same, the only way this equation can be true is if x is the same as 3. So that implies that x must be 3. So look, I've changed both sides as 2 to the power of something. So I have 2 to the power of x equal to 2 to the power of 3. The only way that can be true is if this x stuff here is equal to the power stuff over there. So we know that's the answer, x equal to 3. They'll all, work, they'll all pretty much be the same from here on in. Um, but there'll be some manipulations we have to do based on the division rule, multiplication rule, fractional rules. So let's keep going. So 2 to the power of x is equal to a quarter. Now. When we look here, we can see that 2, again, we're looking for this common base again. Now, 2 is a pretty low number again. We can't go much lower here, but 4 we can change as 1 over 2 to the power of 2. What's the next change we can make here? Well, we want to get this above the line. So the next change we're going to make is 2 to the power of x is going to be equal to 2 to the power of, remember, when we bring it up, the power is going to change sign. It's going to go to minus 2. So here we have x must be minus 2 for that one. Next one, they're starting to get a little bit trickier. We have 3 to the power of x minus 2, if you're locking on in the exponent here. So can we change 81 as 3 to the power of something? And I think what you'll find is 3 to the x minus 2 is the same as, or sorry, 81 is the same as 3 to the power of 4. So if you want to test that and see that 3 to the power of 4 is 81 and, and with experience you'll actually learn which ones make sense here. So if that's going to be true then the exponent stuff here must be equal to the exponent stuff here because the bases are the same. So that will tell us that x minus 2 must be equal to 4. We bring that minus 2 across it becomes a plus 2 because we're solving for x. So x here must be equal to 6. Now on to the final one on this page. So again we have 2 to the power of x on the left hand side. We have a lot going on over here on the right hand side. So first thing let's change is this square root out to be a half. So 2 to the power of a half over 2. Now of course we still want to get this all in the one line. So I still have 2 to the power of x on the left hand side. I'll keep my 2 to the power of half here. But I'll bring this guy up here. Now you can't see his power but as we mentioned up here 2 on its own is effectively 2 to the power of 1. So he's 2 to the power of 1 underneath. When we bring him up, he's going to be 2 to the power of minus 1. Okay? Now it becomes a multiplication problem. What do we do in these multiplication problems? Well, we add the powers. A half minus 1 is going to be minus a half. The only way this equation can be true now, since the bases are the same, is if x is equal to minus 1 half. So, I saved the best one for last. So, it says, express 27 over root 3 as a power of 3, and hence solve this equation. Looks very difficult, but we can take it in steps. Now, they've kind of given us a hint as what we have to do. So, we have to change all this stuff to 3s. So, 27 over root 3 is going to be what? Well, 27 is 3 to the power of 3, and we're going to change this square root 
to 3 to the power of a half. What's the next manipulation we're going to make? Well, we're going to bring this guy up on top. So that's going to be 3 to the power of 3, now multiplied by 3 to the power of minus a half. Now what do we do in this multiplication rule? Well, in the multiplication rule here, we actually have to add the two powers. So that's going to give us 3 to the power of 2 and a half. Now if you do this, you're going to get 5 over 2 in your calculator. And, and it's, it's okay to write 2.5, but I prefer to write it as a rational number like that. So, we've changed all this guy here to this stuff here, just a 3 to the power of 5 over 2. <laughs> And hence, hence meaning, use your answer from the first part. Solve this equation here. So, 3 to the 2x plus 1 is now equal to, and if you notice, the stuff in brackets is the same as the stuff we solved from the first part. So we're going to change this stuff here in brackets to our new number here. So that's 3 to the 5 over 2, all to the power of 3. Now when we look here, we still have to change this guy here a bit. So again, we're not doing that into the left hand side yet. But what do we do with these two powers? So hopefully you remember from the other video that a power to a power is multiplication. So actually, this stuff's gonna be multiplied. So three multiplied by five over two is actually 15 over two. Now we're nearly there. Both bases are the same, so it's a 3 over here and a 3 here. So the only way this equation can be true is if this stuff is equal to this stuff. So therefore, if 2x plus 1 is equal to 15 over 2. Now it's just a straight up algebra problem. So for me, to get rid of this 2 in the denominator here, we're going to just multiply the whole thing by 2. That means the left hand side by 2 and the right hand side by 2. That will cancel those 2's there and it will give us 4x plus 1 here on the left, or sorry, plus 2 on the left hand side equals to 15. Now we need to solve for x, so this 2 comes over, so we're left with 4x is equal to 15, now it becomes a minus 2. 4x is equal to 13. That means x must be equal to 13 over 4. So yeah, a pretty hard problem to solve when you look at it here. But we can see, using the manipulation of powers and some of the rules, we can make we can change around and make it easier. They do give us a hint at the start. I took this question from the textbook, Text and Test 2. So if you want to see similar questions to that, it's, in, it's one of the first sections of questions. You'll see this question on um, one of the pages there. Okay.